I got a roll of Berlin 400 from Lomography. Let's see what it looks like. I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. Tri-X represented here in blue, the Berlin in red. Now the lines here are very, very similar in overall curve. We do have a little bit of a bump in the middle where the Tri-X dips a little bit in the middle. But other than that, the curves are relatively the same. Now the red overall is higher in all the steps, and that's because it has a lot higher base fog. In fact, of all the films, this was the highest base fog of any film that I shot. So we'll see if that affects the print. But other than that, the curves are nearly identical, so we would expect very, very similar print performance. So let's go ahead and look at the prints and see if they actually gave identical performance. Here we have our Tri-X 400. Here we have Berlin. Now, this is the 400 speed shot. It is a little bit flatter in terms of tonality. However, 
I don't believe it's because of an underdevelopment issue in this case, but rather the extraordinarily high base fog level. Uh, it's really kind of pushing all the shadow areas up and forcing the highlights up onto the toe uh, early. So I don't know if Berlin is fogged like this for everyone. If I just happen to get a very old roll sent to me, uh, I, I don't know. I've never shot this film before and I haven't shot any since, but it did have the highest base fog of any roll of film uh, in this entire project. All right, aside from that, first impression, it is uh, a little bit odd on a spectral sensitivity. We do have a high and heightened red sensitivity, which means a little bit darker in the cyan. Uh, that I think bears out in the tone of my cyan shirt. It is darker uh, in the Berlin than it is here in the Tri-X. The red of my skin isn't necessarily darker or lighter. Um, at this point, it's hard to tell. We are seeing that there's less shadow separation here. That again could be due to the high base fog has kind of muddled the separation in the shadows, or it could be it just doesn't separate well at all. A very uh, sloping toe instead of a little bit smoother toe like Tri-X. The other thing we can see without even getting close is the graininess of this film. It's grainy, uh, or rather grainier in appearance than Tri-X, even from this distance. So we're really going to see how that affects our uh, fine detail as we get closer. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we see really close up. All right, zoomed in. The grain is very apparent. It is very coarse, but it does seem rather sharp. So at least it's got that going for it. We can see the shadow area does not separate well as it goes from deep shadow of my face up into the portion of my cheek and up on my forehead. So again, is that from the base fog? Is that from characteristics of the curve? Who knows? This is the negative that had the same amount of shadow detail. However, we clearly do see a difference in the shadow separation. All right, let's look at the shoulder. We can still see some detail in the edge of the fabric as it's silhouetted against the background, but I feel it is rather obscured by the grain. We do have these two fine scratches going down through the center of this particular shot. Uh, it goes through the background. You can even see it as it goes down through the t-shirt in the lower portion. Uh, that did not happen with any other film but it did happen along the length. It is not the camera because this was shot in the middle. No other film showed that, so it is indicative of the film itself. Uh, it could be the quality of the can it's in. It could be manufacturing, but at some point it got scratched. It's a black scratch, which means it's through the emulsion, not through the base. The base would show as a white scratch. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the other shoulder. Here we can see the sharp detail of the collar. I would say we do still have a pretty good sharp film. We are seeing detail in the stitching along the shoulder, up near the background. The fabric of the shirt, I would say the detail is obscured a little bit by the coarseness of the grain. So for a 400 speed film, it is a very coarse grain. If you are looking for that particular look and you don't like the idea of pushing your film, then this may very well get you that coarse grain look. Put this in Rodinol and you're going to have golf ball size grain. All right, let's look at the detail in the lightest side of my face. And here we can see that the grain is obscuring a little bit of the detail under my eye and above 
my eyebrow and the forehead skin. We are losing some of our tonal separation. Uh, it is slightly underdeveloped, so our highlights didn't quite reach the amount of Tri-X, but it's actually fairly close. I would say we were only maybe 30 seconds off on the developing time, but that shadow separation is fairly apparent in that it has created really kind of a deeper shadow on the shaded side of my bridge where it's just not giving us that same brightness that we got in the Tri-X. So the film itself, I would say for the price, it's not really worth it. Uh, to me, I think you can get better 400 speed results in other films that are less expensive than Tri-X like Kent Mir, the ultra-fine 400 turned out a pretty good performance. This particular film, not so much. I think it's, mm, with the base fog, that, that really turned me off of it. I am unlikely to try another roll uh, based on this experience versus the cost. But that's my experience. Yours may be slightly different. You just have to try it out for yourself. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. If you would like to help support this channel, you can go to my Patreon page. You can get prints, t-shirts, and lab towels from the links down in the description. I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.